Chris Mucker is our guest musician this morning. How absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. What a gift to have, have you here with George this morning. Thank you, George, as well. Um, and welcome to everyone. It's a gift that we can all gather here together, um, whether we're here in the sanctuary or if you're joining by Zoom. Um, good morning and, and welcome. Um, and thank you to uh, Mary Kearney and Denise Giardi for hosting Coffee Hour today. I hope you all can join us in Carroll Hall following the service. And a thank you from Audrey Mercer, um, who reports that um, $535 was collected for school supplies um, to help the families who have children in need um, through the Center for Food Action. So a great thanks from Audrey. And Audrey, thank you for letting us help with this. 
Um, and there were also school supplies collected as well. So thank you all. Um, and just a, a note, uh, September 15th, so in two Sundays, we will have our Startup Sunday, which means our 8 o'clock Holy Eucharist service will resume. Our 10 o'clock service will be a family service and our choir resumes, and all of that will be followed by a parish potluck picnic. So hope you all can join us um, on the 15th. And then on September 22nd, um, we will have our church school and um, the confirmation program. All of those uh, teachers and students of those programs will be commissioned at the beginning of our 10 o'clock service on the 22nd. And, um, and our, our church school will begin on that Sunday. Um, and save the date for Saturday, October 19th for St. Mark's Cabaret. Um, there'll be more information forthcoming, um, but please save the date. And if you'd like to help with that, um, there's information on who you can reach out to in our e-news and on our website. And, um, and thank you to Robert Robinson, Henry's son, and Margot Fisher. Thanks to um, their donations of um, time and talent, we have a new free library um, case out there. So um, hope you can check it out. Um, and it was just a, a real gift to come in this morning and see that there. Um, also, I just ask that you please um, keep Father Jim in your prayers. He'll be having a procedure this Wednesday. So please keep him in your prayers. And a reminder about communion, all are welcome to come forward for communion. Um, if you would like to receive wine, we just ask um, that you either drink directly from the chalice or reverently touch the base of the chalice. We just are not intincting, we are not dipping the host into the chalice at this point in time. Um, if you would like to come up and receive a blessing, um, please indicate that by crossing your arms across your chest. And we also are offering healing prayer this morning, which will um, be right outside the sacristy. So if you'd like to come up and receive communion or a blessing and continue on for healing prayer, um, please know that you are invited to do so. Um, but good morning and welcome. And now let us stand for our opening
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And a collect for Labor Day. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives one with another that all we do affects, for good or ill, all other lives. So guide us in the work we do that we may do it not, not for self alone, but for the common good. And as we seek a proper return for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers and arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes. Leaping upon the mountain, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips, because God has your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia. King's daughters, Stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, 
but eat with defiled hands. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, God. God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This past week, I've been seeing a tiny, tiny hummingbird outside the window of my office at the rectory. So tiny that at first I thought it was a large dragonfly. And I used the back bedroom on the second floor of the rectory as my office. And my desk faces the window. So it's really great to get a bird's eye view of all that goes on on the trees out there, especially at that level. And whenever I see that tiny hummingbird, she seems to be focused on the flowers of the Rose of Sharon, one of a few different types of trees right outside that window. Although we begin our passage this morning from the Song of Solomon at chapter 2, verse 3, the chapter actually begins with the words, I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. And the Hebrew name of the flower here was first translated by the editors of the King James Bible as Rose of Sharon, although previous translations had rendered it simply as the flower of the field. And it was probably more of a crocus or a budding bulb. Now, before I go any further afield, down that rabbit hole of the flowers that are in this poetry, in this scripture, let me just say that what is fascinating to me in all of this is the beauty the beauty of the words, the beauty of the imagery, the beauty of the message. The Song of Solomon, or as it is also known, Song of Songs, is one of only two biblical books where there is no explicit mention of God the other being the book of Esther. As Jonathan Sachs, English Orthodox rabbi, philosopher, and theologian described it, this duet scored for two young lovers, each delighting in the other, longing for the other's presence, is one of the central books of Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, and the key that unlocks the rest. It is about love as the holy of holies of human life. It is about the love of Israel for God and God for Israel. And the fact that it is written as the story of two young lovers 
is also fundamental. For it tells us that to separate human and divine love is to allocate one to the body, the other to the soul, and is a false distinction. Love, he continues, is the energy God has planted in the human heart, redeeming us from narcissism, making the human or divine other no less real to me than I am to myself, thus grounding our being in that which is not me. One cannot love God without loving all that is good in the human situation. Love creates, love reveals, love redeems. Love is the connection between God and us. That is the faith of Judaism, he notes. And for me, I believe of our faith. If we do not understand this, we will not understand at all, he notes. We will, for example, <laughs> fail to realize that the demand God makes of his people through the prophets are expressions of love. And our love of justice is about love, no less than justice. There are two primary interpretations of the Song of Songs. The traditional being that it is an allegory of the love between God and Israel, or between Christ and the church. The dominant interpretation in modern times is that it is ancient love poetry. And I believe that it is both. It is a celebration of the love of a man and a woman for one another, with here the woman's voice, the dominant voice in the song. And the song describes a love marked by fidelity and mutuality. The lovers are faithful to each other. And it is a celebration of the love reflected in the renewal of the life of the earth itself. And many of the great Christian mystics, such as Julian of Norwich, John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, are renowned as lovers of God. One of the evenings last week, as I was working at my desk, and saw that tiny hummingbird, and stopped to watch it darting among the flowers and leaves of the branches outside the window, all of a sudden, she darted over to my window and was right at eye level with me, just hovering there, right there in front of me. And although it seemed as if she was looking at me, <laughs> she was probably just looking at her own reflection, I know. But I just sat there trying not to move, just watching her for what seemed like a really long time. And again, it was probably only just a few seconds. And all I could think of was how tiny and delicate she seemed to be. But she couldn't be that delicate to be making it out in the world of northern New Jersey. She's got to be pretty resilient, as well as delicate. And as I was watching this tiny, hovering, beautiful creature, all I could think of was Christian mystic Julian of Norwich and her vision of the hazelnut. 
She wrote, in this vision, God showed me a little thing, the size of a hazelnut lying in the palm of my hand. And to my mind's eye, it was as round as any ball. I looked at it and thought, what can this be? And the answer came to me, it is all that is made. And I wondered how it could last, for it was so small, I thought it might suddenly disappear. And the answer in my mind was, it lasts and will last forever because God loves it. And in the same, everything exists through the love of God. In this little thing, I saw three attributes. The first is that God made it. The second is that God loves it. And the third is that God cares for it. There is so much more to this world and to this life than we can see or touch. And yes, we continue to work for justice, justice in our world. But as Rabbi Sachs wrote, our love of justice is about love, no less than justice. Love is the energy that God has planted within the human heart that connects us with each other, with all of creation, with our God. In the midst of it all, we are gods alone, created by God, called by God, loved by God. God, the maker, the lover, the carer, past, present, and future, for always and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Honoring God with our hearts as with our lips, let us offer prayers for all those in danger and need. O Lord our God, help us keep you first in our lives. Help us speak only good things in your name. Help us rest and worship more fully. Help us safeguard all life. Help us to be faithful to those we love. 
Help us to be generous and speak truth. Help us celebrate the gifts of others. Help us to want to share. We give special thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Sharon, Grace, Anthony, Justin, Howard, Nakai, and Gabriel. Lord of compassion, for the Church Universal, especially presiding Bishop Michael, presiding Bishop-elect Sean, Bishop Carly, Joan, and Jim, that you will give us courage to give up our preoccupation with ourselves and to give more of ourselves to your mission in the world. Help our leaders, especially Joe, Kamala, Phil, and Tahisha, strive for reconciliation of all peoples. Lord of compassion, for the vision and mission of this parish of St. Mark's, that in faithful witness we may show your love and justice in all that we do. We ask you to give us the nourishment we need to bear the fruit of repentance, so that we too may be a people of forgiveness and mercy. Lord of compassion, for help to be a people of radical inclusion, that we may honor all and create equality and safety for all your children. Lord of compassion, for peace in our world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Give us the courage to give up war, bitterness, and hatred. We pray especially for Gaza and the Middle East, Ukraine, Haiti, and Sudan. Lord of compassion, for the poor, the persecuted, those who are ill, and all who suffer. Give us the courage to give up quarrels, strife, and jealousy in our families, neighborhoods, and communities. Lord of compassion, in communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, we pray for those who have died, and we pray for comfort for all who mourn. We pray also for the hundreds of individuals who lost their lives this week due to the senseless use of guns. Brandy Grace Schuler, age six, Uteville, South Carolina. Wayne Stewart, Kansas City, Missouri. Officer Troy Floyd, Summit, Mississippi. Robert Trustee III, Vero Beach, Florida. Manuel Pino, Chicago, Illinois. Jerome Edward Thompson, Ashburn, Virginia. Roseanne Martinez, Edna, Texas. Nathan Morris, Canton, Michigan. Mackenzie B., age 11, Stone Mountain, Georgia. Aaron Thompson, Charlotte, North Carolina. Jasmine Elizabeth Johnson, Indianapolis, Indiana. And Justin J. Brown, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Lord of compassion, dear people of God, what else or whom else should we pray for? Father Jim, people of Palestine, Yana, Yana. Yana. Michelle, Amanda. Loving God, help us to focus on what we have, not on what is removed or changed. Strengthen us when we feel discouraged or overwhelmed. Embrace us so that we may know your loving presence within us and among us. Walk with us as we bring your love and carry your light into our world. Amen. God of infinite goodness, through the ages you have persevered in claiming and reclaiming your people. Renew for us your call for repentance Surround us with witnesses to aid us in our journey and grant us the time to fashion our lives anew through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what you have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please be seated. Give thanks to the Lord our God. 
is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory giving himself freely to death on the cross he triumphed over evil opening the way of freedom and life on the night before he died for us our savior jesus christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you he broke it and gave it to his friends and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me <coughs> As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please. Thank you. Marcia, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ, body and blood. May for many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Thank you. And let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all persons, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
tell us a little bit about, about you. Sure. Um, well, my name's Chris. I, uh, I play several woodwind instruments um, around town here and um, other places like that. Uh, I started on saxophone, but I love the bassoon. Uh, it's sort of my classical horn. And um, yeah, not much to say. I work on Broadway as well as um, freelancing. Yeah. Yeah, you just got married, right? How long are you married? I've been married four years. And yeah, in October. And your wife and you were able to travel together and stuff? Yeah, so my wife is a stage manager. We worked on a production uh, called The Queen of Versailles, which is moving to Broadway next year in June or July. And uh, so it was, it was really, we were very fortunate to be able to head out of town together and, and work that contract together. Yeah. Tell us, what's it like to play here as opposed to playing in a pit orchestra? Sure. So <laughs> a pit orchestra is, um, you know, sort of like a black box in, in, in the sense that it's, it's uh, you're playing into a microphone and they're collecting that sound. So there's not all these reflective surfaces uh, like there are here. So here the acoustics are naturally occurring and you can just play the instrument and it's sort of like a, it's sort of the way the, the music was intended to be played. Uh, and then versus a pit orchestra, it's almost more of like a recording studio where they're collecting the sound and then um, managing it closely on a, on a board and pumping it into the house via uh, electronic amplification. What's the word you used earlier to describe your experience playing here? I don't know what word I used. I mean, wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's so nice to be able to, to play here and, and hear the, the music. As, as, uh, it's just an easy place to play. It's, it's the way uh, I enjoy playing live music. Yeah. So, come back and see us again and have a great holiday weekend.